This presentation will be held in English, and I will start with a take a look in the rear mirror in 2016. It's also a part in down the memory lane. In the autumn in 2016, we had a goal to take an autonomous vehicle into Scandinavia, an autonomous minibus. We had a lot of meetings with different companies and organizations looking for projects and partners. Several of the participants listening in, in today's uh, Novit talks were invited. And the meeting with Opplysningskontoret for Vegtrafikk, Norwegian Road Federation, is the one I remember best. In the reception that morning, while waiting, one of the largest newspapers had the following pictures, as you see on the screen, and the headline. Uh, forget driverless cars, glem førerløse biler, which is very similar to what we see in uh, Madrid today, and take a look at the chaos down there where they had 50 centimeters of snow. We borrowed the newspapers to the meeting, I said. Within a few months, we will introduce a self-driving minibus to the Nordic countries. And in June 2017, Swedish television visited our first demo in Karlstad and described it as a bread toaster on a wheel. Five years has gone. Many of us believe that in 2021 that we will be picked up in an autonomous vehicle for the first and last mile on our trips. That will be under four to five on the SAE level. We read monthly reports from California about the number of miles driven by Waymo and Cruise. We were impressed by the plans for robot taxis in parts of Phoenix, Arizona, and we watched Cruise LiDAR movies from San Francisco. Their AWS autonomous vehicles have still challenges in left turns and crossing traffic. But instead of waking up a morning where robot taxis is waiting outside while you have a morning coffee, we are witnessing a step by step involvement. New advanced driving assistance systems, ADAS, functionality is implemented as the development continues. In this Novitz talks, we focus on status today and what to expect for the next year. What you see now is uh, this uh, Avri report from K KPMG. And when we started in 2017, there were no index, but I would have been surprised if Norway had ever been on that list. Since 2017, there's been a lot of activity since uh, Columbus and Foris Mobility started in Stavanger with the first bus on mixed traffic. Brakars pilot in Kongsberg in extreme winter weather on a four kilometers long route. And there is more to come, including a very exciting pilot with Ruter, a local PTI, to start a pilot in Ski in a suburb of Oslo. And I think that pilot will attract a lot of international and European tourists to come and see and visit that pilot. There are a lot of criteria and measurements behind this index. I don't have time to dig into all those, but it's general fair to say that this is due to the large penetration of electronic the electrification of the cars. Look to Norway has again been a slogan, but also the amount of different pilots with autonomous vehicles testing different bleeding edge technologies. And I don't just think about these buses, I think about all the other small autonomous vehicles, which has been demonstrated in Oslo, in Kongsberg and other places. Uh, we chose to separate the production of vehicles into software and hardware when we made the value chain in 2017. Software still eats everything. To deploy an autonomous vehicle in complex traffic, the vehicle needs to become smarter through artificial intelligence. And to become smarter, the vehicle needs more data and, and information from the surroundings. And by surroundings, we mean infrastructure, other vehicles, person, and other sources. The status on this subject will be presented by Aventi. Um, to deploy an autonomous vehicle into mixed traffic and a new ecosystem where partners have become competitors and competitors have become friends, partners, and allies, applied autonomy will present today's status. And more interestingly, take a look into the future. All right. Uh, my name is Bjorn Ellis and I come from Aventi. Uh, we, most of the time we uh, deliver traffic infrastructure systems to the Norwegian Public Road Administration and then we also work a lot with R&D. Uh, today I will talk about the CCAM, Cooperative Connected and Automated Mobility, uh, and how we can create a Norwegian consortium with some uh, other uh, companies from other countries. 
to compete for the Horizon Europe uh, CCAM funding that will be made available this year. Uh, Frode talked about the, the levels of driving automation, and here we see the, the Tesla in the middle of the picture here. It's uh, currently at level two, and, uh, and most of you guys are probably familiar with these uh, levels. On level zero, that's the that's if you have warnings, if there's uh, uh, somebody in your blind spot, or if you wear off, off the road and cross the line for your lane, you get a little warning. That's level zero. Level one is it's, uh, the adaptive cruise control, which is very convenient. And uh, level two is if you have both the light, uh, lane centering and uh, adaptive cruise control. Uh, all these blue levels, you still, uh, you're still in charge. You have to keep your eyes on the traffic. If, when we move over to level three, then you can start watching a movie or reading a book. And the first one out here will be this uh, traffic jam chauffeur. So if there's a lot of traffic jam on your way to work, you can let your car drive and, and read a book. There is no commercially available vehicles at this level currently. Uh, next level is uh, um, completely driverless. They don't expect you to take over driving at any time, but it only works in certain areas. For instance, on the freeway or in the city. And then, of course, uh, Elon Musk says he'll be at level five uh, in, within a year. He said that for five years already. Uh, and then uh, the vehicle is comparable to a, a skillful, professional human driver. So getting from uh, level two and three and up to level four and five is really, really tricky. And the problem is the um, artificial intelligence. Uh, we are like... Uh, we're on, uh, almost um, 80 or 90 percent there, but those last uh, 10, 20 percent are really, really hard to, to figure out. It's all these uh, strange cases. Uh, for example, when the Tesla drove into a white uh, 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 trailer truck and the sky was white too and you couldn't see it. You have all these odd cases that we have to solve. It's not good enough to be driving safely 90 percent of the time. You need to be able to drive safely 100% of the time. Uh, all these uh, challenges uh, uh, become, an, um, uh, we call these operational design domains, which domain is the vehicle designed to function in. Here I made uh, four different examples. In this example here, it's all the city buses that Frode talked about. You can drive in mixed traffic at very low speed and maybe only in the daytime. Uh, you can have uh, extend the operational de, uh, design domain to uh, highways. Maybe you can drive at night and day. Here you can drive on rural roads and eventually maybe you can even drive under all conditions, night, night and day and uh, snowstorms. So this is the big challenge. This, uh, the list of operational design domains uh, is, is practically infinite. Uh, one way to solve this uh, is to also make the um, infrastructure help the, uh, the vehicles to uh, interpret the traffic and all the surroundings. We'll get back to that a little later. Uh, all, all these functions, they need to be safe. So here we have the automotive safety integrity levels, A, B, C, and D. And uh, A is the least stringent. Here we have the rare lights if one uh, if one of your rear lights uh, fails you're still pretty safe while uh, if the power steering which is at level d if that fails it's of course a catastrophe so uh, all your driving functions must be um, all um, must be according to a, appropriate uh, uh, safety integrity level here is a typical architecture for automated driving on the top here, we have the backend systems and um, we have the HD maps. We have the security, we have the over the air updates. Uh, and then we can uh, download maps into the vehicle. The vehicle can uh, localize itself. It can perceive where it's at using its uh, artificial intelligence, looking at the surroundings with its light, light, LiDAR and cameras. And it can predict where it's going to go next and plan the, uh, the trip. <clears throat> here we have a, a similar illustration. So this uh, environment here, this is the road with all the cars and traffic signs and pedestrians. 
And down here, you have the backend systems. You have the data centers with the maps. You have uh, traffic alerts from the traffic management centers. Uh, and uh, information from the, from the surroundings goes into the vehicle, typically using the, cam uh, the cameras and the radars. And it will also receive some information from the backend system. And this creates, a, a, this creates an understanding of the traffic scene, which it then can use to predict where it's going to drive. And then it starts controlling the steering wheels and the brakes, which makes you move on the, on the road according to, to this system. One concept that, uh, that I mentioned, how can we make the infrastructure aid the vehicles in interpreting the, the surroundings? Uh, um, one concept uh, is the infrastructure support levels for automated driving. This was developed in the Inframix uh, project. Then you, uh, if you have um, ISAT level E, then there is no help for the automated vehicles. If you have ICE, ICE level D, then you can get the map information, which is basically what we get today in most vehicles. You get some map information. Uh, if you have a, a, a road prepared for ICE, ICE at level C, you will also get the warnings about traffic alerts and incidents and uh, weather reports. If you have uh, ICE at level B, then you will, in addition, get the information from the road infrastructure if there's a little traffic jam in front of you. And uh, if you have ICE at level A, then you will get guidance. The infrastructure will tell you to change lanes, slow down, speed up. It will uh, give guidance to the vehicle itself. So we can envision um, a situation like this where a truck comes driving on this uh, road here. This is an ice at level A road. So there's a lot of help for the uh, automated vehicle to drive on this road. And when it gets to this road here, uh, to D, then it will no, no longer get guidance about which lane to be in, but it will still be able to function. It drives off on D and maybe here, uh, a regular chauffeur, a driver must take over the truck and drive it to the to, to the to its location. Here we have the whole SeaCam uh, uh, um, uh, architecture, so to speak. Uh, we will have a lot of digital platforms. The digital platforms will have the mobility as a service uh, providers. It could be ride sharing, car sharing. We have uh, parking solutions, home deliveries, uh, everything that uh, me and you would download as an app on our phone which can provide us uh, transport services, will be living in, in this space. Down here is the digital infrastructure, which where you will find the uh, maps, traffic regulations, travel informations, uh, traffic signs. So this is basically a digital twin, a simulation of the, it's not a simulation, but a digital twin of the actual traffic. This, uh, uh, Data Twin will communicate via a physical infrastructure using the cellular network or ITSG5 or PC5 communication to the vehicles so they can obtain all this information about the, the traffic surroundings. In addition, the physical infrastructure can aid with positioning technologies so we get very accurate centimeter level positioning using RTK and, and RTLS. Over here, we have the traffic management centers and the fleet management centers, which will guide these vehicles where they are needed, depending on if you get an order or if you have to repair something on the road or if a tunnel or lane is uh, being closed down. And then we have to have uh, cybersecurity that everybody can trust uh, across different, uh, different uh, service providers. We can use this... Uh, this architecture to improve the algorithms for um, automated driving. So if we start out here with some new algorithms, they are downloaded into the vehicles or into the road infrastructure. Then we collect data from the vehicles or from the infrastructure as standardized test data. This test data can be uh, uploaded into uh, harmonized simulators that will be uh, have a certain type approval for different traffic situations. 
And then we can refine the algorithms. Now we can make the simulated vehicles run through this scenario thousands and thousands of times to refine the algorithms. And then we can publish new algorithms that can be downloaded and into the vehicles. And, um, and then it goes round and round and we get better and better algorithms for automated driving and we expand this odd uh, feature. This, is, uh, uh, this was a draft proposal that was sent to the U uh, European Commission for um, uh, connected cooperative and automated driving, where they describe how they can, uh, how we can accomplish everything I just explained to you. The, uh, it's estimated budget is, um, is uh, 1,200 million euros to achieve this. And in this document, you can uh, read more about uh, how they, uh, how they envision accomplishing every feature. The Norwegian Research Council uh, has been uh, running this presentation for a couple of weeks now. And here are the topics that are listed, the projects that we can uh, apply for funding uh, in Horizon Europe for, for CCAM. Uh, so we have... Um, <clears throat> Here we have the physical digital infrastructure that uh, my company is very interested in, Aventi, it's down here, and, and including the digital infrastructure, how we can aid the autonomous vehicles by uh, providing them more data from the infrastructure. So then the, the question is, how can we create a Norwegian consortium in 2021 to compete for Horizon Europe CCAM funding? Here is ITS Norway and, and all the companies and organizations that are members here. And over here, we have uh, SAMS Norway. ITS Norway, they uh, work with intelligence uh, traffic systems. And SAMS Norway, they work with uh, uh, autonomous uh, uh, transportation features. So I encourage everybody to, to contact us and see if we can put together a nice consortium of 10, 15 companies and, and see if we can get some of this funding back to Norway. And then it's back to uh, the next talker. So thank you. Uh, then I, my name is Ola Matlan. I'm a CEO of Applied Autonomy. So I'm going to present uh, a little bit about the market segments of this, uh, what we have done so far, and uh, what we are going, what I recommend you to do, and what we uh, in Applied Autonomy does. We are a company established in uh, Kongsberg. Uh, we are owned by Kongsberg Innovation. Um, myself, V, and uh, employees of company. We were founded in 2017, and uh, we focus on uh, applied autonomy, how to deploy those things and, and operate them. Uh, we focus, uh, there are, I would say there are four main uh, segments market segments and use and, and a lot of use cases within those uh, market segments for a, a autonomous solutions. It is about logistics. And, and there is a lot of equipment now coming out for that supporting autonomous production or automated production within logistics. Um, there has been a long time with, with those solutions inside uh, where they operate in, 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 in the closed areas. And now they're also coming outside. I will speak more about that. Um, and they will go more mixed. Uh, road maintenance. Here is uh, two type of equipment. We have tested uh, a smaller one, uh, but I can see that's coming more now for also out outdoor road maintenance. Then we have bus services. Uh, we have seen last mile and first mile production and, 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 and services that is well suited for um, speed up to, I would say, 25 kilometers an hour, uh, where it, the speed is not important, but the service is important. That is bus service. Uh, and then we have the robot taxis and larger buses. Uh, that is the, the fourth market. Very much of the Bjorn's presentation was about uh, how to increase the speed, how to uh, to increase the the different type of OMs working together in this in, in a mixed environment in the high speed that is uh, very much in the in the robot taxi environment but for the 
the slower bus service, the road maintenance and logistics, there is also already uh, solutions here that you can start with. Um, so what is this about? Uh, today it's about entrepreneurship. It's about uh, seeing what you can use these uh, solutions for uh, to make the transport system safer, uh, more sustainable, and also to use uh, the legal systems that's already there and to improve the legal system. Uh, this We started this with in 2016, I would say, um, and, and it's those um, four labels, I, I would say, is that we, all of us that has been working on this in Norway has, has connected this work too. So uh, as you can see up at the right, that was uh, a first group of us uh, with the, the Minister of Transport from Norway, uh, the uh, the Free Torge, the Vy, the uh, Ruter, the uh, Bertelsten and the Kondo that started this uh, together. And even uh, Elon Musk uh, visited us in 2016 and, uh, and had a spoke with us, uh, with us and, and he thought about uh, maybe, uh, or he was invited to create this battery factory in Norway. But now others is starting the battery factories in Norway and, and this is going to be a big business for us. And we had very good meetings uh, from, uh, as you can see here down at the, at the left with the, in the minister's um, uh, offices in Oslo. Where uh, Isimail, the CEO of Isimail, Gilbert uh, Garnar, um, shared his thought and shared his vision with the Minister of Transport and the Department of Transportation. And that was the beginning of um, making the legal uh, framework in Norway for uh, autonomous driving. And we have in Norway then a legal framework that supports uh, taking the driver out of the vehicle. So the legal framework in Norway is already prepared for that. What we now are working on is to more the, the getting permissions for type of vehicles, autonomous systems, and uh, a safe way to do it. There are no type approval for autonomous vehicles. There are um, type approval to get plates on the vehicle that is would say on, on level two uh, now today, there are starting something on level three on type approval, but uh, level four uh, that Bjorn described where there's more autonomous systems, that is still no uh, type approval there. So we need to uh, write an application every time we are setting such system into uh, production. And I call it systems uh, because it's, to me, it's about a system of automated processes working together where they should uh, working safe they should work sustainable and where i hope you as a user if you are a user you do not need to think about the technology behind it you do not think about the technology behind a mobile phone so uh, i think you just do it use it and that is i i think it's also what i expect you as a user would think uh, should work uh, we that work with the technology that's many of us we are uh, of course thinking about how to make this even better um, and I will sh show some cases here that we have been working on uh, in Norway so uh, we started in 2018 with Forest, Kogsberg, Jövik um, all about uh, production with buses last and first mile uh, we learned a lot about the technology. We helped the product, the providers of the, the, the technology to improve the vehicles. And we started also to see where are the industrial opportunities in this. There are two uh, industrial uh, main areas of industrial improvements. Is first is the industry to use this technology to be more competitive, to even have a better production than they had yesterday. And to be a leader in the global market, you always need to think about how to improve your processes. And, and we have fixed uh, improvements of process in Norway several times. And, and, and we have to, to still do that every day. The second area is also to have a position in this technology to be a actor delivering technology and, and knowledge to the global market. In, in, in making this process efficient and safe and sustainable. So exporting the technology here. And maybe some of you think that we do not produce vehicles in Norway, so therefore there is no technology opportunities in this. Of course, there are a lot of opportunities in this, 
we pro pro provide technology in Norway now for infotainment screens, sensors, control systems, and we work together as an ecosystem that is working both on the sea, the sea area with the Jara Birkland and also the um, uh, uh, drones for, um, for uh, OSCO and also on the area of, of taxis for uh, smaller taxis for uh, for uh, Oslo for the router. So together there is now an, an ecosystem in, in Norway called SAMS Norway and we have also a test site in Kongsberg that's called City and Lab that's working together on this and that is very important to work on together on this because it's no actor that fixes it all alone on the industrial area. So on, on the shipping side, we do not produce the vessels in, in Norway, but we produce the intelligence on the vessel to make it competitive for our industry and also to export it. So in 2019, we had uh, uh, Brenoy, that is an um, uh, industrial site in, in uh, northern Norway, where they bring out, uh, as you can see, stone from mountains uh, that is produced and, and shipped out with vessels. This is uh, here, they improve their production, they improve the safety, they improve also the health and the environment for the workers by making these vehicles autonomous. Here they have used Volvos and it was the production in 2019. We have production systems in, in, in whole winter time with autonomous vehicles in Kongsberg. In, uh, here you can see two of them working and it's still in production in Kongsberg. So it has been in production since 2018 with uh, autonomous uh, buses with Brockard, uh, first and last mile. We have even been at Svalbard, and now Oslo is also having their system in production, and they are going to extend it also then out to ski. She. So there is a lot of things going on here. And the important thing here is if we are able to increase the uses of these solutions, we, are, we need to have competence in Norway to implement it, and we need to have, to have systems around it. Because if we do not have in any industrial gains in it, then, it's, then we will slow down. And the last thing we have done in now in 2020 is to have a service on demand in Trondheim and taking out the safety driver. And taking out the safety driver is the important thing to make these systems efficient and, and even more uh, cost reduction. Uh, and the driver, that's out there, but they will, uh, driving the buses today, they will get new jobs. But, um, uh, and there will be a lot more, uh, I would say, type of, of robot taxis and, and also bus services that is automated. And that's also road maintenance and logistics. So I'm sure there will be a lot of new jobs also in other sectors. And to have the jobs, we be, must be, be cost efficient. So uh, we have been able then to to set up the systems totally here with this is an app from Norway that is where you order go mobile that where you book the, the service it's applied autonomous service here where you we connect it to the vehicles and so make sure that the services is delivered to the to the end users that is here the prime minister that used this, the service she's very en engaged in the services I would say she visited both from him to use the service there and she brought with her uh, two of her ministers to uh, to Haraya to use this uh, service there along with with uh, a report from from um, financial times so I, th I was a bit nervous because i uh, i said to the prime minister you're welcome to take the bus alone with the, with the journalist from uh, financial times you have to press the button just as a, as a, in a lift you have to sit down uh, and to drive safe. And uh, when you are at the end of the, the trip, please press the button again and you'll come back. And it went well, <laughs> everything fell well. So I was very happy. So this, we have done all these things now in, in 2020. So now it's about uh, to improve it and to uh, develop it for more systems. So, uh, so far we are at the, uh, we have been at, Strange, strange number three, as Frodo said, on the um, on KPMG in, index. We might not be on all indexes, but on the KPMG index, we, we like very much because we are we are on the index and we are on on the third place. And and what this is about? It's about efficiency, safety, and flexibility. Flexibility is also important because we like to have production systems 
where we can also improve and are, are not dedicated to one way to do it or are dedicated to one type of, of technology, like you must buy everything from, from one actor. So it's about also have a modular system where we built up the systems of, of um, production in a way that you can take in and out components. And that is what we are also working on here in Norway. We to be on the number three uh, on the list here is, is then to be about also to be an attractive international partner where actor comes to Norway to find partners here where, the, where we can go out and in international to market together with them and do in very challenging project with them. So from applied autonomy, this means that for our side, we had 30% of our um, income last year, 2020, from, from the international market. That was also in the COVID-19 year. So, and, and our third year of operations. So um, it's very much about working on, on, on this to be a leader uh, internationally very early. And, and there for export, to get more money to back to Norway and to be an attractive place to, to invest. That is this is about. Um, so you might wonder where is this possible to do today? Yes, it is. So you have to start to think about what, what is your visions? What are your goals? Plan long-term and act now to be a leader. Connect to leading test sites and ecosystems. Don't start this alone, because uh, the actors that I mentioned now, uh, some Norway, test site Kongsberg, um, us as actor, we, we share our knowledge. So so um, so uh, do not just try to uh, go out international. Think that you should be the leader with working with an international company. We have this competence already in Norway, and and we are used to work together. Define modular systems and, and start to learn now. The logistics, you can start now. Road maintenance, you can start now. Bus services, you can start now. The, as Bjorn said, the, the technology is very much on development on, in all areas, but in the area of, of robot taxis, uh, I would say there is still uh, some learnings to do be, before you can take out uh, the safety driver. We are much closer on the other, other market segments. So um, uh, here is a, a type of architecture that you can look into. Um, so um, you have the environment, you have the technology on the vehicles, the hardware, I would say, and then you have the software side. So um, the, the vehicle itself uh, is there, but it, they, they can be a, a vehicle that you already know. So uh, these systems, have to be connected to it, and that is what we are doing. Uh, doing. And very much of the things that work uh, Bjorn talked about was the connection between the we to we, uh, the communication around, and the sensors and the actuators. And and what we are working on uh, from in our company is the the planning side and how to work with together then with the control side and the perception side. How we can use these systems together. And um, and we are working then on the efficiency and safety and flexibility, uh, and we are working that in the ecosystem for partners. And what I would say here is what we have done uh, gained now in, in applied autonomy. We have just gained now to, to get to uh, bigger European uh, Horizon 2020 projects, um, where we are going to work on on, on the airports, uh, port logistics. Uh, logistics on, on production sites and also um, uh, hub to hub uh, transportation. That's a project that you can read more about on our news on, on the applied autonomy. It's a project called Award. We have just started that project and we will start one uh, other project together with uh, several partners in Norway that they can say more about. Uh, ITS Norway is leading that project and, and we are still we are looking very much for this eu project because um we get funding to do projects there um when when to, to improve the technology and also that breaks is also support both to easier export that's the thing also about it and and if you like like to be a partner in such a project first start to think what you'd like to gain out of it 
and uh, because you shouldn't just do it for, for gaining money, you should do it for, to take an industrial position either as a user of it or as a technology provider of it that like to take an international uh, position. And so speak to us and and but but uh, and also ask us and and the research no uh, the Norwegian Research Cent Council so Center uh, about how to to get some such project. We have ap applied six times without getting anything, and the two last we we applied for we we got both of them. So it's about learning. And, and what we will develop is, is the this control services that could support logistics, road maintenance, bus service, and later on also the robot taxis. That is what we are doing. So fleet management and road con traffic control and regulations. So this project that we have already got, that's about this. So we are a member of Tesla Kongsberg. We are a member of ITS Norway. We are a member of SAMS Norway. And we are supported by ITS Norway, the Norwegian Research Council, the EU Commission, Beacon, Council and Nordic Innovation, and and we have a lot of customers that, that like to share share their their experience and their, their knowledge. So thank you very much. Okay, then we are back to questions and answers, Q and A's. But before that, uh, due to some technical introduction, uh, I think you missed that. I I said welcome to 2021 and introduce uh, the introduction introduction. Now we are ready for questions and answers. And uh, I'll start. But, uh, uh, someone have a question about the CCM Horizon funding. What are the main criteria to get this funding? I think both of you have one CCA funding. Uh, but I think, uh, Olaf, could you dig into it? What are the main criteria to get this funding? If we get established a uh, Norwegian consortium, uh, first of all, you must read the the scope of the of the call. You must read what they ask for. You must read what they like to have as answers out of the of the project, because those projects is about gaining competitive advantage for Europe. They can see that China and the USA is doing some very important things, so they see that the EU Commission see that Europe have to be take a leading position and this course is about making us working together so we and the EU Commission have asked the industry what is important to fund and the industry have answered and then the EU Commission have written these applications to give money back to the industry so we have to read those that's the first thing and then we have to check out around the topics there that is, is of your interest and if it's yes then you have to go together into the team and ask who is going to take the 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 consortium leadership and you have to be sure that you know what you like to do and you also help the other ones to do their things good uh, and you have to start the process of finding partners early so Finding the right partners early is, is, is a good thing. Also, and also work with others that have already got funding is a good idea because most of them have failed on applications and, and to us it's very important also to, lay, uh, to learn from the fails. So, so uh, start reading the scope, see what you can get out of it, see how you can provide something to it, find partners. The projects that I <clears throat> listed there, they will typically give a funding of uh, between five and 10 million euros. And then you get 70 to 100% funding. Sometimes mm. you have to. Uh, the project that we got, that was about the project, the first one we got was about 20 million uh, euro. We get uh, from applied autonomy 1 billion uh, euro, and it's 70% uh, um, funding. And even more because there is some uh, administrative um, uh, things that I have it on the top. So it can, I guess it's up to 85%. Uh, this last one we got is 100% funded. Um, so it's between 70 and 100% coverage. Okay. Uh, after this presentation, during this day or tomorrow, you will receive an email with a link to the, today's presentation. 
In that email, there are some links about how to apply for the CCM. There is a how to do it. There are information about the different projects and so on. And it's also a good uh, overview of what's going on about regist registration laws and so on. Okay, next question. Uh, uh, there are two about this KPMG index ranking. Uh, and uh, in the beginning of the webinar, you talked briefly about the KPMG ranking. What are the underlying factors used to determine a country's rank and which factor does Norway need to focus on going forward? Uh, I think, uh, Olaf, you know it's pretty well. About <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I have evaluated the report. Uh, it's about it's 75 uh, detailed um, mm -hmm. factors, 75. Uh, they are grouped, grouped into four. Uh, those four are legal, uh, innovation, uh, infrastructure, customer acceptance. So those so the four, uh, five is, is directed to those four. Uh, we were at number 10 on legal factor. So that is the, the number one that we have to improve. And to improve the legal factor is to work with together with the uh, the government, the by directorate and, uh, and the government to improve the, the practice, how we practice it. But uh, it's also about um, getting good documentation from the technology providers the, the solutions so it's both both having better so, uh, uh, solution documentation and, and and the practice of it so we have a research project in norway together with the with the ui director of the uh, where uh, the plan is then to develop a, a better practice um, on the other the three areas much better but there is a lot of detailed factors so those that like to have I have written a very short report on this where also I recommended uh, wh what we should do together to be on number three and even improve to number one so the, but of course for Norway the number of electric vehicles uh, have also um, mean a large influence to where we are ranked because um, but the, the the that that factor is uh, influencing I think um, Five or six of the of the uh, evaluation criteria of the seventy five percent, the seventy five uh, criteria, so like charging infrastructure, uh, number of electric vehicles. So so it cannot have that much to say. Mm. Okay, the next one that uh, there's a you can see the Netherlands and Singapore is higher ranked than Norway on the KPMG index. What they do, what does they, what do they do better than Norway in the industry today? I can ask, that, uh, yeah, they are. Um, so in Netherlands, they um, have another legal framework, so they are higher up on the legal side, so that brings them higher up. Uh, they've been able also to do some very good projects. They have also much easier infrastructure. They are completely flat and do not have any winter time. Even do not Singapore have that. So we are doing, we are number three on, with all this challenge the infrastructure in Norway. So, so um, they, so they have a, a lot of better uh, legal framework also in Singapore and that they don't have this infrastructure with the nature. And that is competitive advantage because if it works in Norway, then it can work everywhere. Okay. And then there is a question, I think it's uh, to you, uh, Bjorn. Is there a collaborator for building an age new project from Norway. Have you got, got some partners from other European countries? I love yeah, that question. Yeah, we, um, uh, with the Horizon Europe uh, uh, 2020, we uh, were part of a couple of consortiums uh, with partners from all over Europe. We, we won some of them and we lost some of our applications. Uh, right now with these um, these calls that are listed in this presentation for, for CCAM, we have no partner so far. The calls have not been published yet. Uh, SAMS Norway is participating uh, with other European organizations to, to hash out the actual wording of the calls. And as soon as they are published, we will, we will turn around and find some partners and create consortiums and, uh, and apply for this funding. But as of now, we have not, we're not part of any consortium. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then there is a question to you, Olaf. Uh, you have these four markets described, and the question is: 
in which of the four markets described do you see the highest potential for automation in the near future not the long term but in the near future i i will say it that is well uh, depending on your case uh it's very much dependent on your case because um uh, if you are thinking then about efficiency in, uh, of it, um, I think Peter and I have got a uh, potential out there to to save cost and also to save um, that their workers because it's tough to work down there in in the morning with with these vehicles. So so they again gain the value there. So um, it depends on that. Um, I would say. Um, logistics on indoor logistics have already got and the robotization of packing and unpacking and so on have already started to do that we have a, we are also good companies in robotization now in Norway uh i would say that we have good companies uh five or six are, are i would say are leading one of them are are, are thrown through, but uh, engineering but we have several more so uh so those that are, are interested i can i can tell you what, that some of them and and uh, and and uh don't be afraid to tell them that you exist because we are good on that robotization and and logistics indoor is is already we, are, we have already started that so um coop and osco and so on so so that is an outdoor start so so that that is near future that is now okay yes. I have well, another question here to both of you, and it's about the future. When will I be picked up in a robot taxi? When will when I drink my morning coffee? When will there be a robot taxi outside to take me to to work? And when will there be a autonomous vehicle who takes me to Paris or London? <laughs> what, your name? what are your predictions for the future? Well, there is uh, the uh, router has uh, a couple of Toyotas in in, in Xi already, so I'm for sure they can come and pick you up in uh, by the end of the year. But that's a pilot project. Uh, okay, so I would say we already have taxi services in Norway. Uh, so uh, that uh, I, I guess the question is about when it's about without a driver on board. Mm. Uh, and uh, first of all, I would say it depends though where you live. <laughs> so, so it depends uh, because it, it takes time to to have the entrepreneurs, the leaders that that like to bring in these things. So, but then it's about when is the technology ready for it, and if you have a, a large pocket, you can we can of course ask uh, Google to come with one if you have a large, large pocket. But I, I don't think it's about that. So, um, I, I, I ask I guess the question is about when is market ready, in general. And uh, in market ready in general uh, for um, a service in a city, then we talk, then we spoke, speak about the time. Uh, but um, I'd like to be to bring here the city planning. Uh, we have companies in in now in uh, in some Norway that also thinking about city planning, because all city planning today is done in advantage of the private vehicle. So we also have to think about how should the city look like? Uh, how should this be when 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 we have this type of services? How should the infrastructure be to to also have an, an efficient um, transport system? The private car is very efficient, so it's challenging to compete with that. Uh, and and uh, and uh, and then I also have to ask you: What are you willing to pay to to, to get rid of your private car? What you are willing to pay for a trip, and uh, how should then the subsidizing or the, the the business model look like? And that's also important question. So we are to work with the business models. How to work with uh, today uh, the public transport actors like Ruter and so on? They procure for ten years. How should the procurement process from for the public transport actor looks like when we have these type of services that are on demand work, working all over? It can't be for ten years. It must be different. Yeah. Uh, I have a hypothesis myself. I can. I would like to test it on you. I think that in a few years' time, uh, a journey between Oslo and Trondheim, so that I will drive by my, using my steering wheel to uh, Kaiheven and uh, suburbs of Oslo, 
then there will be driver less or self-driving until I meet uh, the suburbs of Trondheim, and then I'll have to take over. And is that an approach you think will happen, or that, that you will have to step by step under the, some of the rules are more mature? Uh, as long as you are in, in uh, as you are in sitting behind the wheel, um, you're keeping awake. Um, I, I think that will be in very short time. Uh, because when you're talking about the type approval, the type approval is having the driver behind the wheel and you have to keep, keep awake. That level three is about that. Level three, uh, but when we talk about level four of autonomous systems, they, they then you have to have, a, if, if that should be on the car, then you have to have the type, type approval for that distance today. So if you have a vehicle that you'd like to, uh, different acts would like to, to drive there without having they're, they're sleeping like that. Then you have to have a different type of process, a type of, type of service, and that is a very interesting case. Uh, but but the type of approval will will, um, will make this different. So so that is the type that that we need to use more a little bit more time on. You mentioned about uh, purchasing processes, and there's a question say asking: Is the ambition that everyone should change their private car? and start driving a taxi? Well, that's the ambition of the European Commission. They envision that uh, you, if, if you can afford a vehicle or several vehicles, you, you purchase them and you use them 5% of the time and 95% of the time other people are using your automated vehicles. Yes. Uh, the final question. How do you position smart mobility with other important sectors in smart cities, such as energy, smart infrastructure, with cross-sector solutions, solutions with smart mobility in, in the center for the future? Be in the center for the future, I think, uh, Björn? Yes, like I tried to illustrate in my presentation, uh, the, uh, the CCAM uh, is not just about driving people from A to B, but it's also the logistics and the mobility as a service uh, where everything is within the same platform. And, um, and this CCAM archi architecture will also um, provide the necessary backends the services and infrastructure services for, um, for uh, Olaf's uh, road maintenance. So if, if you can have uh, automated road maintenance machines, they will also use this uh, system so, uh, so it's definitely all encompassing. Okay, that was all for Q and A's. If there are further questions, feel free to contact any of us. Uh, as I mentioned, you will get this presentation, and you will get an email. You can ask uh, Ula by his email. You can ask Bjorn, and you can of course ask me to start a process or any or ask us for anything. We are. Ready. Before the next Innovation Tuesday, I wait. I can't wait to that one.